and stereos and so on, and the clothing turns of 50 percent. You cannot, well you can, but four customer orders at a time is not a lot. That's five, ten picks, that's it. And you can see already from this card it's way bigger than five pieces of clothing. You actually do 4T, 4 zero orders at the same time here. So these four bins are just pre-sorting. Ten orders in one bin but mixed. So then in the second stage, when they're done picking, they go to a pack station and they do a put to light. So it's not a pick to light, this is a put to light operation. There's, oh the picture, well it didn't fit on the picture, there's, I think there's 12 um, compartments. So they pick, they take a product from the cart, they scan it, you see here, a red light goes on, that's where they put it. They scan the next product from the bin, another light goes on, that's where they put it. Until the bin is empty from the cart, and then they can pack them one at a time. This system has a second um, twist, um, in that if some product is missing, it is noticed at this point in time. And they put severe penalty on it. It's really, I had a lot of discussions with the warehouse manager about that. And the penalty for the workers here is if a product is missing, they have to go back and go get that product. So they have to, and it's quite a distance to walk sometimes. They do that to train their picks to be efficient and to be accurate. So they say, okay, we lose a bit on that time because it takes a lot of time for the picker to go back. But the picker has a responsibility for those orders. So the person does picking, the sorting, and packing, labeling, everything. So the whole order is only handled by one person who has full responsibility. So if something goes wrong, that person has to correct it, him or herself. And they say it works pretty well. So they don't do confirmation at the picking. So when they're picking the item from the, from the shelf, they don't Yes, the actually they do that too, but you can always say it's not there or something. And then if the system sees it's still there, okay. so if they push the button, it's not there, the system might reroute them. Yeah, there is a confirmation. Or they might have lost it. Sometimes they just, uh, one drops off the car. Just, it doesn't happen too often. It's always the exceptions that you think that you fixed in the system, right? And still something happens. And the same person has to um, do the packing as well. So they put it in and you see here the sorting rack still with the card in front of it. Yeah, you see four by three, so there are 12 um, locations actually. They only use 10 of them. They pack and it gets shipped to the loading dock. This is a big... Uh, um, st uh, stressful operation actually. They, um, customers can order until 9 p.m. and get it delivered the next day. And the last truck of the delivery company leaves at 11 p.m. So the orders that arrive until 9 have to be shipped within two hours. So there's a lot of, a lot of planning and that's why we are also working with them to see, to get some of that even, especially the, the workload balancing we're looking into right now. So how to make sure that you put in as few people as possible and still make that 11 p.m. deadline for all the orders. Um, well, these are just all the options. Um, I only have a few minutes left for my last hobby, which is um, layout. You can imagine that layout and the use of that layout together determine efficiency, right? So what you see often is that, oh, this is the layout, this is the design of the warehouse, now let's try to optimize control policies. And then maybe that works or maybe it doesn't work. Uh, it's like, um, how do you call that in English, a hurdle race, right? Um, it's like making the perfect moves in a hurdle race and being very fast. 
But if you could really design this for speed, you would leave out the hurdles, right? And that's what we're talking about. Change the layout and make sure that the control policies can actually do a good job. So what is a good layout? Well, if you look at this one, is this a good layout for a warehouse? Do you have extra questions? It depends. It depends. I say it does not depend. I say this is a bad layout. Flame? <laughs> I think the N is just a text, actually. It's not even north. But, um, even if you flip it, I don't like the layout. It's not a good layout. Never. I know that um, Kevin Gu is coming later today or tomorrow, I think. So I will not treat his part. For um, unit load handling, I'll talk about the order picking part. There's two pieces there. Um, this is the layout top for you, right? I've only shown pictures like this, but actually these pictures are not very good. There's actually even an article somewhere, if you look, I, I forgot to look up the reference. Um, I think it's article from the 70s or so, that proves, and it's right what they do, that it should be square in time, because then you're fast. It's like the, the nearest location storage assignment rule that we just talked about. Starting from the depot, you can reach every location in the minimum distance. Well, if you make the warehouse square in time, you minimize the expected distance to the farthest location and optimize the layout. But we're not talking about single picks. We're talking about multiple locations to visit. And even if you're talking about single picks, actually, this is not right either, but Kevin will tell you about that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, so I'm talking about multiple locations to visit. If you do that, then this, or a layout like this, is much better some extra options to change from one aisle to the next. I cannot tell you in advance whether you should have just one extra, or two, or 25 extra, but at least one. It will cut travel distances significantly. Well, why is that? Well, it's just an extra option, right? If you go here, and you have to go to there, now this is minimum distance. On the other end, if this cross tile would not have been there, I would have had to go around and had to travel a bigger distance. So every extra cross tile gives me more shortcuts. So basically every extra cross tile makes rides faster. So with every extra cross tile, I have to make my warehouse bigger because I want a certain storage capacity. And in the end, that is going to eat your um, efficiency gains. So, um, yeah, that's here. This is really a typical picture. I've done many experiments, and all pictures look somewhat like this, only the minimum is at a different location. So introducing the first cross aisle gives you a big improvement in performance. The second, typically a little bit, and then it starts to wear off. And then in the end, if you continue to add extra cross cells that really don't help that much, you get an increase because the warehouse is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then travel times will go up in the end. So if I have to say it up front, I say put in one, and you get like 50 to of the potential gains here. And then if you interface that with the number of aisles, number of cross aisles, and number of aisles, you get a picture like this, where you can find the minimum spot that gives you lowest travel times. And you can see some of the trouble here. You can see some of these different shapes. You see that? It is definitely not a smooth surface, and that makes it hard 
to, to find optimization methods. I have two more minutes, Alice, or? Sure. But they're going to be keys minutes, not two and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know that uh, mine are longer than his, right? Oh, uh, well, then they're going to be out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, optimize the layout. If you write it just down, it's really easy. You have, you have uh, the number of aisles and the number of cross aisles to choose from, and you have a certain storage capacity that you want to achieve, and travel time must be minimized. This is really, the total formulation looks really simple. Um, problem here is, as I said, the surface is not smooth, so a search method is pretty hard to find. Um, but the good thing is, for pra all practical purposes, there are maybe a thousand. The, the biggest I find is where I could think of like 10,000 options that could potentially be a usable layout. Well, 10,000, you can still just do them all. So you basically do the, all the subject to, you do that by hand, and just have the computer do the goal function. But this is the goal function. You can find it in one of my articles. I just found out I even left out one or two um, formulas here. There's the B here. That's not written out completely. There's the E, I, J here, and the Q. So I forgot to write those out. So it's, it's kind of a big formula. But it works, and it's pretty fast. So once you have it in your computer, it's just click, and you have an estimate. And now, since I already made these formulas, you can just download them from my web page if you want to. Now, I said always have cross aisles. Um, there's two exceptions. Exception one, if you have a lot of pigs, you have to go everywhere. Well, if you have to go everywhere, you don't want extra cross aisles because you have to go everywhere anyway. So skip it. You don't want extra aisles because you have to go to almost every location. So extra aisles is just changing aisles is extra effort. So the best way is just to have one aisle up and one aisle down. There's no aisle changing, no cross aisles, and that's short. Might be trouble to get this in your warehouse layout, overall layout, but it is shortest. And the other option is what Kevin probably is going to talk about. Um, I have a little tool on my website, so if you want to work with uh, um, order picking layouts, you can just use the tool and optimize based on the formulas that I just showed you. All right. I make sure through Alice or Mike or Carmen or whoever that you get, this, so you don't have to write write all of the references down. Okay. So I think um, in the interest of moving our agenda along, I'm going to Yeah, so you'll have your chance to, to interact with him. Uh, so let's give him a, a great big round of applause.